Hello, welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Shushma Singh. Today we are going to start unit 11 power and authority. And our topic is power Marxist and Western approach. The concept of power is one of the fundamental concepts of political theory. The analysis of the nature of power in both socialist and capitalist societies is essential for understanding the nature of politics as well as the state. Lenin said the question of power cannot be evaded or brushed aside because it is the key question determining everything in a revolution's development and in its foreign and domestic politics. While studying the concept of power, what often comes to mind is its use in the broader sense by the Marxist thinkers. Both Marx and Lenin highlighted the social relations in a political system as well as the relationship between the man and environment. Over the millennium, in reality, nature has always been both the subject and the object of power. Earlier, nature's control over man had given a different definition of power. With the control of man over nature, because of growth in science and technology, the concept of power acquired a new definition and dimension. As a synonymous of political and social domination in static structures, power assumed multidimensional forms. In the Marxist approach and technology, the concept of power is identified with the control of state power through revolutions. Lenin said, the passing of state power from one class to another is the first principle, the basic sign of revolution, both in strictly scientific and in the practical political meaning of the term. The basic spirit of any revolution is the question of power in the state. He said the class struggle becomes real, consistent and developed only when it embraces the sphere of politics. In politics too, it is possible to restrict oneself to minor matters and it is possible to go deeper to the very foundations. Marxism recognizes a class struggle as fully developed nationwide only. If it does not merely embrace political but takes in most significant thing in politics, the organization of state power. While differentiating between power and the state, Lenin was of the opinion that social power existed before the origin of the state and would continue to be there long after the state withers away. Criticizing the views of Parrot Strav that the state would continue to exist even after abolition of classes, Lenin said, first of all, he quite wrongly regards coercive power as the distinguishing feature of the state. There is a coercive power in every human community and there was one in the tribal system and in the family, but there was no state. 
the distinguishing feature of the state is the existence of the separate class of people in whose hands power is concentrated according to the marxist thinkers the sphere of politics includes all aspects of the state it implies all types of relationship between the classes he be it economic ideological semi ideological and other lenin said it is a sphere of relationship of all classes and strata of the state and the government the sphere of interaction between all classes two term power is often used in a diverse sense in both polysemantic and indefinite manner according to farder bolensky the nature scientist speaks of power over nature the philosopher over the objective laws of society the sociologist of social power the economist of economic power jurist of the state power psychologist of man's power over himself and so on thus although every expert talks about the importance of power it is almost impossible to provide an explicit meaning of power the western sociologist highlights power as an essential feature in all social kinetics the french sociologist talks of the aura of mysteries surrounding power michael hackel writes at present the phenomena of power preoccupy theorist of power law public law and political scientist francisco brocchio emphasizes that in its political form power possesses the most formidable enigma the socialist crozier opines that power is present in all processes of social life there is indeed lack of specificity regarding the source of power the western sociologists most often are extremely empirical refusing the philosophical content of power or are in love with abstract sociologist dimension of power morris diverses takes a positive view of power he is critical of viewing power or authority from a a metaphysical and philosophical point of view he proposes that the emphasis should be given mainly to the practical methods by which power commands respect and the means by which it obtains submission dobeger however is not very consistent in his observations while discussing about some of the great general indications of power he prefers to indulge in the philosophical groundings of power some of the western thinkers have also talked about the biological concept of power going back to the greek days aristotle viewed power as a natural condition of society nature determining the character and process of society aristotle said for that some should rule and other be ruled is a thing not only necessary but expedient from the hour of their birth some are marked out for subjection others for rule and whereas there are many kinds of both of rulers and subjects that rule is better which is exercised over better subjects 
for example to rule over men is better than to rule over wild beast that work is better which is executed by better workmen and where one man rules another is ruled they may be said to have a work some of the leading western sociologists were not in favor of this tendency towards biologism george bourdieu for example emphasized that the power and society were born together john william lapre conceived power as the exclusive attribute of social organization as a social factor inherent in the social group and and force is the concept of power from the fact that man belongs to a group some researchers like herbert simon have presented a very narrow definition of power simon uses the concepts of power and influence as synonymous others like gerard bergon are reluctant to use the term power and desire this term to be replaced by the concept of control to ensure that what they say is ideological neutral this type of approach in effect may not be able to provide a scientific analysis a definition in a dictionary of social sciences says power in its most general sense denotes the ability to produce a certain occurrence or the influence exerted by man or group through whatever means over the conduct of others in intended ways this definition of power is deeply influenced by max weber's famous formulation power signifies any capacity to work one's will within given social relations even against opposition independent of what the capacity is based on this judicial concept of power was very popular among the western writers during the 1950s and 60s the western concept of power as the capacity to work one's will is reflected in the writings of the eagle when he said authority in the sense in which the word is used here means the imposition of the will of another upon ours on the other hand authority presupposes subordination while analyzing both the marxist and the western approach towards the concept of power one finds that the western approach is heavily indebted to the focus on institutional will the dominant will of a group or organization whereas the marxist approach relies on class will as the basis of power raymond aron and crusier prefers to use law in place of will and in place of domination they would like to offer direction influence and control power is thus the real ability to implement one's will in social life and political power represents the real capacity of a given class group or individual expressed in politico legal norms while discussing about the nature of power one ha- has to keep and i on the following aspects a class approach of power concentration and diffusion of power occurring from the pluralistic nature of society different aspects of power such as economic political social differentiation between the social and 
personal power, characteristics of power in different socio political structures, and isolation of legal principles from violational one. In the 1930s, politics came to be viewed as a system of relationship with respect to power. Both George Catlin and Charles Merriam were at the forefront of this trend. Later, other political scientists such as Harold Laswell, M. A. Kaplan and others followed suit. Laswell's theory of elites wherein he highlighted the distribution of values as the base point of the political process became the source point of the majority of American students of politics and political science came to be treated as the science of power. Thus, both Western political sociologists and Marxist thinking on the growth of political system have contributed a great deal towards the development of the concept of power. The concept of power one must not forget is multidimensional. Often power and influence crisscross each other's area of operation. Some people talk about intentionalist and structuralist understanding of power. According to intentionalist, power is the attribute of an identifiable object such as political party, social grouping, or any interest group. The structuralist understand power as a form of social system. Sociologists like Talcott Parson, neo-Marxists such as Alterers belong to the structuralist school of thought. Steve Lucas in his book Power, A Radical View talks about the three phases or dimension of power. According to him, power has the ability to influence the pattern and the process of decision-making framework. It has also ability to influence political agenda and control people's thoughts. Thomas Hobbes first enumerated the notion of power as having the capacity to make decisions in his major work. Levithian this has mostly been the basis of conventional thinking in the area of political sense. Robert Dull, in his book, A Critic of the Ruling Elite Model, has supported this concept of power, which, according to him, could be both objective and qualifiable. This approach was widely adopted by political scientists and sociologists, especially in America during the 1950s and 60s. While discussing about the power as the ability to influence the decision-making process, some researchers prefer to highlight non-decision-making as the second phase of power. In their seminal essay, the two phases of power, Barcher and Bratry instituted that to the extent that a person or group consciously unconsciously creates or reinforces barriers to the public airing of policy conflicts, that person or group has power. As Sankrishant said, some issues are organized into politics while others are organized out. The third dimension of power is its capacity to influence the thought process of an individual or group. The ideas and views of individuals or groups are mostly influenced and structured by factors such as family, 
peer groups, schools, churches, mass media, political parties, and the overall environment at the workplace. When Speckyard in his study, the hidden persuaders has analyzed the factors that have the ability to influence and manipulate human behavior in a particular direction, what Stephen Lucas said. Influencing, shaping, and determining his very wants. In his book, One Dimensional Man, Herbert Marrier, the leading neo-left theorist, talks about this aspect of power in advanced industrial societies in which the needs of society could be manipulated through modern technology. This is what he said created a comfortable, smooth, reasonable, democratic unfreedom. Here we want to wind up today's lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.